Hello all my fishy friends and welcome back to this week's Day Fishy Adventure. This week's episode is starting off with a bang. Because if I actually saw what I think I saw, me and Little just scored one of the biggest and most epic roadside scores to date here on Stay Fishy. So without any further ado, let's go look and see if I was right. So if you guys have been following along for any amount of time with us here at Stay Fishy, it's pretty common knowledge as to what my very favorite time of year is. And that is right now. The weather's perfect. There's fish to catch, mushrooms to pick, and animals to kill. And that is exactly what we have planned for this episode. Obviously throughout the season already, we've been picking mushrooms pretty hard. And the one species that has been pulling the biggest sneak on us up to date so far is the chanterelle mushroom. And as I was cruising down the highway, going about 50 miles an hour, I looked over and again, if what I saw is actually what I saw, this is the score of the century, everybody. There's lots of mushrooms that you can already see. Literally looked over, saw a couple of clumps in the ground, and normally when I see that, what's this? Yep, 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 I wasn't wrong. Here they are, I'm gonna hide off the road so nobody else sees me. There it is, the white chanterelle. Yes! These mushrooms have been kicking our butts throughout the season so far. A lot of times it takes kind of the perfect weather conditions, uh, the right amount of rain, the right temperatures for these things to come up. But all I can say is they can't hide any longer because we found them. Let's go see if the big patch is indeed these chanterelles. What a beautiful mushroom. I feel like sometimes really you just can't try so hard. You gotta just wait for mother nature to show you the way. Hey, here's another big clump. Nope, wrong kind. Wrong species. That looks like maybe a racilla or some other kind of mushroom. I don't know. It's not the one we're looking for. But that's actually not where I thought I saw them. So let's go over here. Where did we see them, Little? Where were they? Wait. Yep, jackpot. That one's a little bit old. I'm going to leave that one. But normally where there's one, there's more. The spores usually spread around the certain area where these big ones start to grow. Yep, jackpot. Yep, that's a chanterelle. That's a chanterelle. Wow, look at them. You guys can see through this little patch here, every single spot that the ground's turned up like that is a mushroom. Jackpot. Car. Now we are on public lands, but what I don't want to do is give away our secret roadside spot, so I'm gonna hide from these cars coming. UPS guy, he's on the clock, he's not stopping to pick. Yes! What an epic way to start the video. I got a lot of picking to do. Please excuse me, everybody. Let's fill up this bag. God, it is so crazy to me sometimes how well these mushrooms can play hide and seek. I mean, this is one, that's one, that's one, that's a big cluster. And they're not even showing themselves. They're just pushing up some of that, that material, pushing up that dirt a little bit. And that's all I'm seeing. I can see some that are actually sticking out of the ground, but the, I notice a lot of the times, the ones that are actually sticking out of the ground aren't the ones that we want. They've kind of deteriorated already. There's been too much, too much of the elements on those mushrooms. They've gotten wet and gotten too much sun. So I'm gonna start turning over every little mole hole until we pick them all. Let's do it. What a blessing. It's so crazy how much effort and time, gas you can spend, sleepless nights thinking about them, and uh, just all out effort uh, put, trying to find mushrooms like this. And then sometimes, like I said, you just gotta quit trying so hard and wait till they find you. And that's exactly what had happened. They found us. Okay, let's see what's hiding under here. This looks like the mega load. Oh, how cool. Again, look at how hidden these things are. I mean, unless you already knew what to look for, there would be absolutely no way of telling that these things were growing here. Who needs a bouquet of flowers when you got bouquets of mushrooms, right? And once again, I'm not breaking any rules here. I mean, the National Forest, I'm totally legal to be picking. But again, a roadside spot like this is one that you want to keep on the down low, so coast is clear. 
Look at all these. There, 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 there. Everywhere. All right, the bag is almost full. I think we have plenty. I'm breaking a sweat from trying to hide from the cars. But one thing I will say about picking mushrooms is it's not really a resource that you can over harvest. There are regulations as to how many you're allowed to take each day uh, just as a mushroom picker. But I feel like considering that there might be other pickers out there, there's only so many that I can handle. We're gonna be out and about for a couple days so I don't wanna let any of these things go bad. So I have enough to maybe trade for some other goods along the way, give to some friends if we run into anybody along this trip and uh, I know where these things are. And along the lines of these mushrooms, I have a super, super cool and interesting way that I'm gonna preserve these things and a recipe I'm gonna show you guys towards the end of the episode here. So you're gonna have to wait around uh, to see that. One of my new, very favorite ways to eat these chanterelles or a lot of the other, other kinds of mushrooms you guys have been seeing us pick over the last few episodes. So God, I love the outdoors and living off the land and everything that mother nature provides. Big shout out to the creator on this one. Let's get moving. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at destination number two. We've picked up a little straggler along the way. Found him in the ditch. Best friend Phil was walking down the road with his thumb out and I said, hey, let's pick him up. We're going to do a little fly fishing, everybody. It's been a while since we fly fished here on Stay Fishy and especially for salmon or steelhead. We'll refer back to some of the videos that we made this winter fly fishing for salmon and steelhead and I had one of the best winters of my life. But now we're fishing for a different species of steelhead. That is summer still had their chinook in here and there's coho there's trout there's all kinds of stuff we can catch so we're gonna rig up our fly rods hike down the hill see if we can't find ourselves a fish poor old guy no friends he ain't got no friends That looks good in the sun. Dark and stormy looks kind of good, but it's not, it is kind of dark and stormy out. The sexy ginge, I don't know, it's kind of just a go-to. We just went and looked at the board at a waterfall up river here, and it tells you exactly how many fish have been migrating up the river. There's been a majority of coho. There's 60 coho that went over, only a few chinook and only a few steelhead. So the coho are gonna like the pink stuff. Ah, oh, this is the hardest part. Okay, I'm going with Michael Fly. I'm going with the Michael Fly. This is kind of a desert fly, if you ask me. You got that chartreuse tail, black body, chartreuse head. Kind of mimics my very favorite spinner that I always use a Michael Jackson spinner, so that's what we're going with. So onto my fly here, you guys, I'm tying a Rapala knot. And why I'm doing this is because this has a big loop at the, at the contact point of the fly. So I'm gonna put my line through there. I make a little loop on my line first. Go one, two, three, four wraps. Back to the big circle that I created. Pull her tight, and there you have it. So now you can see as this fly works down through the currents and then through those lines, it can really just fly around on that line and almost can give that like plug action in a way. Whereas normally it'd be connected right to the line and it doesn't work quite the same. Let's get down there. about all the fly fishing I can handle for this hole. We did pack the spinner rods down here, so I'm gonna let Phil step through. How majestic he is up there. He is all that is man and beast. Fly fishing man and beast. What a beautiful day this was too. But anyhow, I'm gonna pack back up a little. He's holding the other rods down. I'm gonna grab the spinner rod, finish up behind Phil. I think we have enough daylight to hit a couple more holes, so let's get to fishing. Judy! Look at how cute he is! Was you over here napping? Was you napping guy? <laughs> napping guy. Okay, here goes old Michael. Got a good feeling about this. Oh 
Okay, spot number one was a bust, but it's okay with valley and effort. It felt good. As fly fishermen, we always say, that swung really nicely. Can't believe I didn't get one. We have a Mexican standoff. Which one's gonna move? Oh, Little's moving first. Little's going in. What's gonna happen here? Be good, boys. Be good, boys. Good kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going down to the ultimate fishing spot of all. One of my very good friends is down here fishing in a very special way. And uh, maybe we'll show you guys a little bit about it. Nonetheless, let's go check this thing out. This is a beautiful place. <laughs> Brother! Woo! Good to see you, man. Woo! <laughs> it's all right, bro. Put him in play. Ooh, big old eggs. Wow. Look at this place. I got you guys a bag. I got you guys a fish too. Heck yeah, we got something to trade for it. Oh, yeah, we got some mushrooms to trade. Yeah. All right, which one has the best, the best color? Let's see here. here. Look in the belly. Looks like this one. Okay, that's your guys. Heck yeah. Hell yeah. Sometimes you just gotta have good friends to get fish. <laughs> but good thing we found mushrooms. I even said everybody, at least we got some mushrooms to trade. We can have something to get us some more food along the way. I'm like what we just did. It's all about having good friends and being good people. We got ourselves a fish. We got one. We got one. Oh, pretty dark. Yeah, you gotta go back. Awfully dark fish. I think he's gonna send this one back. No use to take a fish that's not gonna have good meat or not be usable. Looks like a little tooly. Uh-oh. A lot of spots. Look at this, look, look. Good. Oh yeah, he's already spawning. Yeah. That one's gotta go home. Yeah. <laughs> Bye bye fish. Well, we can call that a success. We caught a fish. James got one off the platform, send it back. It was a little bit spawned out, so we let that one go. But we got a fish, he gave us a fish. We're gonna give him some mushrooms. We're gonna do a fair trade straight across and we're gonna call it an absolutely perfect day. It's a good life. It's great to have good friends. And what my friend James is down here doing is a very, very special style of fishing that's only done by tribal members of the Warm Springs Reservation. He's dip netting. He's what they're actually doing. They build these platforms out over the water, as you can see. They stick those poles down but that's on the end and they pull up the fish that swim the river. It's a, a tribal right that they all have as tribal members and it's a, a pretty special fishery honestly and it's really cool to be able to come down here and spend a couple minutes at the base of a very very powerful and amazing place. On to the next adventure. So we finally made it home and it's time to process all our gatherings that we found out in Mother Nature today. So the chanterelles are the biggest one and what we're gonna be doing today is pickling these things. This is a recipe that I wanna show you guys because it's something that I just figured out over like the last year or so. And it's become one of my very favorite ways to preserve mushrooms. And it's even a recipe you could use with store-bought mushrooms too. You can go buy portobellas or cremini's or something and use the same technique uh, and it makes a really nice mushroom. And you've got them on hand all the time. They're always good and waiting for you in the fridge. So I'm gonna get these things soaking in a nice little salt water bath. And then I'm gonna start cleaning them up. I like to just put them in the kitchen sink. And the biggest thing here is because the way these things grow through the dirt is they really do grab a lot of debris. You can see all those pine needles and stuff in between those gills. So I'm just gonna use my little hoser here. A lot of times like a little paintbrush or even an old makeup brush or, or toothbrush even can work really, really good for this. Um, and you can actually get in there and scrub all that stuff out. But I'm gonna let these soak. I'm gonna give them a little wash in here then throw them in my bowl over here to kind of uh, drip off all the excess water. And then we're gonna go get our brine ready to go, which is the big key ingredient in this recipe. Number one ingredient here is distilled white vinegar. I'm gonna fire this thing up on the stove and I'm gonna add all my ingredients here and get my brine going. So, but the main ingredient here, what, what's preserving these mushrooms is the salt we're gonna add to this and this vinegar here. So I'm gonna use about the whole gallon because I've got a lot of mushrooms to do. I don't even know if I'm gonna have enough can space or vinegar to do them all. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit that, I'm gonna turn it on high, get that vinegar heating up. I'm gonna add about a cup of kosher salt to, maybe two cups to a gallon, depending on how salty you like your stuff, but I don't like mine too overpowering. So I'm gonna go with about a cup or so of just canning salt. Like that. And then I'm gonna add just some pickling spice. And I get this from Bob Sporting Goods in Longview, Washington, uh, but it's your normal pickling spice. It has peppercorns, it has some different cloves and different stuff in there. Adds a lot of nice spicy flavor to it. <laughs> Remove the dog hair. 
And in goes our pickling spice. You want to use about a half cup, um, or maybe even a cup or so, depending on how much vinegar you have. But I'm going to go with about a half cup. I'm going to have to open this new one up. There we go. And then my last ingredient is going to be dried dill. Fresh dill is even better, but all we have this time of year, it's not springtime. Dill seems to grow a lot better in the spring. Um, so it's kind of hard to find the fresh dill this time of year. I'm gonna go about a tablespoon of dill in there. So that's uh, like that. And then we let magic happen. We're gonna give this thing some time. After that stuff comes to a boil, I'm gonna let it just simmer. I'm gonna let all those cloves and everything start to soak into that brine. Uh, and you'll start to see the color change as time goes on here. So give it a nice mix every now and again, but it doesn't take too long. And we're about ready to start pickling. Now that's a bowl full. Look at that. That is just a thing of beauty. And sorry we're doing this in the kitchen today, guys. I needed the stove. I needed all my spices and stuff that we had inside here. Normally we don't like to cook inside here on Stay Fishy, but this is kind of a, a preserving type of recipe. It's something that's gonna last us throughout the rest of the year, which is one of my favorite parts about harvesting like this. So without any further ado, let's get to chopping. So I got garlic. I'm gonna throw just basically a couple of chunks, a whole clove in each of the jars. I'm gonna do a little bit of red onion with this as well. Add just that little bit of flavor to it. I'm gonna give you a nice little crunch in with the mushroom. That's kind of the best part of doing white chanterelles like this in this recipe is because they have a nice, really firm body to them. And they really do uh, pickle well. And a lot of times some of the mushrooms you do, like the uh, lobster mushrooms or some of the other styles, the, the bleeds, they tend to get a little bit smushy, uh, if you will, if that's even a word. And nobody likes a smushy mushroom. So what we're gonna do is toss a handful or two of each of these in here. Same with my garlics. Ooh, that is a spicy onion. I'm really sad. Ooh. What I'm gonna do, I'm trying to keep these in pretty organized shapes, if you will. Keep pretty big chunks there, make sure there's no pieces of gravel. Because these were obviously growing on the side of the road. I'm dying right now. But really nice knowing everybody. <laughs> Going for a little bit bigger chunks here. Can't do it. Can't do it. Very emotional episode, everybody. We're just so happy we found these mushrooms. <laughs> like to thank my dog Little for being there and uh, for Mother Nature to give them to me. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty. I'm gonna throw them in there just like that. Big old chunkers. Big old chunkers. Brian's done. You can see definitely how we've got a lot of nice color there. All the herbs and spices have soaked into um, the vinegar itself. All that salt is dissolved. Uh, and now I'll be able to get nice scoops with a lot of little, little sediment in there each time. So I'm gonna use my little, oh, bummer. I'm gonna set my little funnel in there. But I do wanna put this stuff, I don't wanna let this cool. Um, I want these mushrooms to kind of almost cook a little bit. And then also, by putting it in there when this, this brine is still hot and I put the lid on, it'll actually kind of help the seal. It'll push some of that air out um, as, as all that hot air tries to escape out of the seal. Uh, and then it'll actually kind of, when it cools back down, I put it in the fridge, it'll suck that lid back down. But as it pushes all that hot air out, it will actually seal it itself. And so that lid will actually get sealed on there tight and it'll stay uh, fresher for longer. So these things will take about a week or two to get actually brined up. So. But we will know. We'll know when we know. And I'm going to take them out of the fridge and I'll show you guys on the on next episode or so. Two beautiful jars of pickled champagne mushrooms. Beautiful. Look at that. This is just awesome how that turns out. So I'm going to set these things upside down. Let the heat rise, it'll push all that pressure out and uh, let these things sit out overnight until they cool off. Throw them in the fridge and then you enjoy. Well, everybody, as quickly as one adventure ends, another one is about to begin. I got my overnight pack. We're heading up into the woods for another 48 hour challenge in a brand new place somewhere I've never been. I'm very, very excited for this episode, but I have to say, thank you so much for being along on the ride. 
for this last episode. This was a lot of fun. I love spending time with my good friend Phil. Love seeing my buddy James and getting to go down to that waterfall. It was absolutely incredible. And like I said, you guys have to try this pickled mushroom recipe. So until next time, everybody, thank you all so much for being here. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there. Thank you.